In the first known fatal accident involving an autonomous vehicle, a car from Uber's self-driving test program struck and killed a pedestrian on March 19th. The accident highlights concerns over safety regulations and it could alter the behavior of designers, lawmakers and public opinion, which could contribute to the delay in the development of automated technology. However, the mainstream adoption of autonomous vehicles is inevitable and it will profoundly change the workplace, transportation and society as a whole. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Human drivers are inefficient and often contribute to the strain on public infrastructure, which adds to the congestion of transportation networks. This is a significant urban issue. The Texas Transportation Institute estimates that in the year 2000, the 75 largest metropolitan areas in the United States experienced 3.6 billion vehicle hours of delay. This resulted in 21.6 billion liters of wasted fuel and 67.5 billion dollars in lost productivity, which at the time was equal to 0.7% of the nation's GDP. In another projection, it is expected that traffic congestion in the United States will cost the government about $3 trillion between 2013 and 2030. Other nations face similar expenses, and although the costs account for a small fraction of the total GDP, they are substantial nonetheless. Every government wants to reduce those costs, and new innovations such as self-driving vehicles could help that process. Self-driving computing algorithms could enhance public transportation and modern supply chains, resulting in lower fuel consumption and operating costs. The US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has developed a six-layered taxonomy to classify the technological advances of autonomous vehicles. By this system, level zero marks no automation. The driver is in full control and performs all the driving tasks. Level 1 outlines optional automation of assist functions, such as cruise control and parking assistance, but the driver remains in control of the vehicle. Level 2 characterizes partial automation functions, such as acceleration and steering. At this stage, the driver must remain engaged with the driving tasks and monitor the road. Level 3 describes conditional automation and requires the driver to monitor the environment and remain ready to take full control of the vehicle at all times. This is essentially the stage we find ourselves in the present. Numerous companies including Tesla, Alphabet, GM, Uber, Toyota, Baidu and others have automated vehicles in various stages of level 3 testing and development. Level 4 concerns limited self-driving automation of all safety critical functions, so the vehicle can perform all driving functions under certain conditions and the driver does not have to monitor the roadway at all times. Finally, level 5 marks full automation. The driver, or user at this point, only needs to provide the destination, but the vehicle is capable of all driving functions under all conditions. Although this classification provides a helpful tool to measure the advances in self-driving cars, Level 5 autonomy is still about 10 years away and it is expected to go mainstream by 2050. But before fully autonomous vehicles become commercially available to individual buyers, the technology will enter smaller sectors first, such as construction, agriculture, mining and warehousing. In these industries, automated vehicles could reshape supply chains and optimize logistical operations, and when combined with other disruptive innovations, a fully automated supply chain would reduce labor costs while improving productivity and efficiency for the involved firms. In the early phase, autonomous vehicles would also affect insurance companies. With self-driving cars, liability will shift from consumers to manufacturers. This will require insurance firms to adjust their business model. Essentially, it means that liability 
will shift from the millions of private consumers to a few manufacturing operators that are responsible for the technical failures. This business practice is similar to the insurance model for airline operators and maritime shipping companies. Another downside of the widespread adoption of automated vehicles are the enormous losses in the labor markets. In the United States, 3.8 million motor vehicle operators such as truck, bus and taxi drivers will simply be out of work. Another 11.7 million on-the-job drivers, such as police officers, mail carriers, etc., will see the nature of their work undergo a fundamental change. So with the introduction of the innovation, some industries will cease to exist. Still others will rise to the occasion. Some analysts expect an Airbnb model for autonomous cars where professional fleet providers will offer the automated vehicles as services to customers. When level 5 autonomy eventually goes mainstream, somewhere by mid-century, it will drastically redefine the workplace. An estimated 1.2 billion drivers around the world will find themselves with an additional 50 minutes on a daily basis. The additional free time will create a large pool of financial value which could be spent on work or recreation. Whether the users consume or produce, overall economies stand to make significant gains with the additional time. For instance, in the United States, Americans spent about 75 billion hours a year driving. Extract from this 50 minutes per user on a daily basis, and the economic value equals $507 billion annually. Automated cars could also make parking easier because they would be able to drop off users right at the door and then simply park themselves somewhere else. In addition, since self-driving cars will park closer together than they do now, it will substantially reduce the need for parking lots. In larger cities this will free up a lot of space. In fact, some analysts expect that fully automated cars will reduce the current parking lots by 90%. That is a dramatic amount of commercial real estate and it carries a great deal of economic value. Yet, perhaps the most profound impact of fully autonomous vehicles will be on the public health, as self-driving cars remove human emotions and errors from the equation, they could reduce fatal traffic accidents by 90%. For the United States, that means nearly 300,000 lives saved every decade, which in turn would save about $190 billion annually in healthcare costs. What's more is that as computing technology for self-driving cars matures, it is bound to accelerate the research of robotics for consumer applications, since both innovations share many technologies such as image recognition, mapping, remote sensing, hyper-GPS, as well as artificial intelligence. Taken together, if fully automated vehicles work as planned, they will generate about $7 trillion in economic activity by 2050. This marks 10% of the current global economy, but by mid-century it would account for 2 or 3% of the worldwide economy. Although the theoretical benefits of autonomous vehicles outweigh the risks, the extensive adoption of an emerging innovation depends not on technological barriers, but on public opinion. A recent survey by the Massachusetts Institute of Technology revealed that nearly half of the American public is uncomfortable with the loss of control that comes with automated vehicles. Even if it is statistically safer, people tend to grade risks according to perceived control. Airlines have a similar problem. Even though it's remarkably safe, most people are still more fearful of flying than driving. What's more is that people are holding automated driving systems to a higher standard than conventional vehicles. According to a poll by GD Power, about half of the Americans note that they would pursue legal action if they were injured in an accident with a level 5 fully automated vehicle. The irrational fear and the higher accountability will delay the adoption of the technology. 
It will also likely contribute to future regulations such as the US Federal Automated Vehicle Policy, which seeks to design a legal framework for self-driving computing technology that balances between safety and innovation. Another barrier for the widespread adoption of automated cars are cultural preferences. Some nations in the West have deeply embedded cultural values where driving cars is associated with recreation, identity, and even freedom. Such societies may resist the transition to autonomous cars. On the other hand, societies that have no cultural attachments to vehicles and face growing urban populations, such as China and India, could adopt the technology earlier than their Western counterparts. The United Nations projects that the urban populations of India and China will increase by 404 and 292 million respectively. More people in the cities means more vehicles on the roads, which will contribute to traffic congestion and pollution. Since necessity is the mother of invention, societies with no cultural preferences and high urban populations will have stronger incentives to apply automated vehicles. This, above all else, will determine the speed at which the innovation can be adopted into the mainstream and thereby reshape the world in which we live and work. This was a Caspian report by me, Shirvan. Our channel is fully funded by our audience and credit goes to our contributors on Patreon who make our steady production of content possible. Visit patreon.com slash Caspian Report for more information. For now, thank you for your time and Sarol.